Towards the end of July, the 5.19 Linux kernel finally dropped. It was about a week late, but overall still a fairly standard kernel release. With better hardware support like some AMD Zen 4 prep, RDNA 3 consumer GPU stuff, some Intel Arc graphics, and things like that. Nothing really that exciting for a video. But there was some stuff in here about Asahi Linux. Apple M1 NVMe controller support has been merged thanks to the work of Asahi Linux project, and the Apple eFuse driver was also merged. On that note, Linus didn't release 5.19 from an x86 system. Instead, what he did is he used an Apple M1 MacBook running Linux. And the only reason this is possible is thanks to the Asahi Linux team. Now, Linus has discussed the need for powerful ARM-based consumer PCs for a very long time. Back in 2019, he discussed this in the context of servers. Now, I'm not going to read you the entire forum post here because it's a little bit long, but I will read some excerpts. I can pretty much guarantee that as long as everybody does cross-development, the platform won't be stable or successful. Some people think the cloud means that the instruction set doesn't matter. Develop at home, deploy in the cloud. That's bull. If you develop on x86, then you're going to want to deploy on x86 because you'll be able to run what you test at home. And by at home, I don't literally mean in your home, but in your working environment. Guys, do you really not understand why x86 took over the server market? It wasn't just all price. It was literally this develop at home issue. Thousands of small companies ended up having a random small internal workload where it was easy to just get a random white box PC and run some silly small thing on it yourself. Then as the workload expanded, it became a real server. And then once that thing expanded, suddenly it made a whole lot more sense to let somebody else manage the hardware and hosting and the cloud took over. So take the context of, you know, any of the big social media platforms, all of them started on a single computer, it was some developer who wanted to go and make a thing, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Amazon even, and then as the workload expanded, then they moved it into the cloud sort of context. But in those early days, they didn't need to get some sort of specialized hardware to go and host it. They could just buy a random computer and basically be done with it. Do you really not understand? This isn't rocket science. This isn't some made up story. This is literally what happened and what killed all the risk vendors and made x86 be the undisputed king of the hill of servers to the point where everybody else is just a rounding error. Something that sounded entirely fictional a couple of decades ago. Without a development platform, ARM in the server space is never going to make it. Trying to sell a 64-bit hyperscaling model is idiotic when you don't have customers and you don't have workloads because you never sold them the small cheap box that got the whole market started in the first place. Now, Linux on Apple Silicon is very far from production ready. If you ask literally anybody in the team, they might say that things are coming along really well, but I hope that none of them suggest that you should deploy it to your entire fleet. But I guess Linus has been following along with the work and sort of wanted to give it a try and just see what it's like. He's been looking to use a powerful ARM-based system, and right now Apple makes the most powerful ARM-based consumer systems. In the release announcement for 5.19, he added this personal note basically explaining how he went about doing the release. In fact, most of the release announcement is the personal note, so maybe it's better to describe it as a personal note with the announcement attached to it, but that doesn't really matter. On a personal note, the most interesting part here is that I did the release and I'm writing this on an ARM64 laptop. It's something I've been waiting for for a long time and it's finally reality thanks to the Asahi team. We've had ARM64 hardware running Linux for a long time, whether that's, you know, Android devices running a modified version of Linux, whether it's things like Pinebooks and all the other devices out there, but none of it has really been usable as a development platform until now. What he means by a development platform is a powerful system. The Pine Books are really cool devices, but, you know, the ARM-based Apple system is like miles ahead in performance, and that's fine because that's not the point of the Pine Books. 
It's the third time I'm using Apple hardware for Linux development. I did it many years ago for PowerPC development on a PP970 machine, and then a decade plus ago when the MacBook Air was the only real thin and light around, and now as an ARM64 platform. But there is a very important caveat here. Not that I've used it for any real work. I literally have only been doing test builds and boots, and now the actual release tagging. So testing it to make sure that everything is working like it should be on ARM, and then doing some Git stuff. But I'm trying to make sure that the next time I travel, I can travel with this as a laptop, and finally dog fooding the ARM64 side too. I have no idea what dog fooding means. If anyone knows, let me know in the comment section down below. And what he means by real work is he hasn't done things like writing code, actually sitting down and developing code. Now, when it comes to the other ARM-based offerings out there, like the Pine64 offerings, the Pinebook Pro and regular Pinebook, devices like these are great for certain use cases like privacy, security, and things like that. But when we're talking about something at the scale of the Linux kernel, it's just not viable for doing that sort of work. It might be viable for, you know, developing most other applications like terminals and terminal applications and even just, you know, doing GNOME development even. Just most other things out there. But the kernel is kind of one of the bigger projects we have in the Linux space and compiling something like that is a little bit crazy. And while the you know, Linux software support isn't that great on the Apple M1 hardware right now. The hardware side is just miles ahead. But the demand when it comes to a Linux-based ARM laptop might actually change sometime into the future. So recently Lenovo released a really interesting device. The ThinkPad X13S with the S standing for Snapdragon. This is an ARM-based ThinkPad. It does ship with Windows 11, and it's obviously designed around Windows, but some of the early people who got it have installed Linux on it, and Linux does work. But it is a bit flaky. So things like the Wi-Fi card don't work properly, and some other things just don't work like they should, but things like that will get ironed out over time. Lenovo isn't going to be actively supporting it, but they have been trying to do more of a push towards Linux. I really hope that this is one of the devices that they do want to start supporting properly on Linux. Now, I haven't seen any real-world benchmarks comparing the X13S and the M1, but I have seen some synthetic benchmarks, and there is certainly a gap, just not as big as you might think. So, in Geekbench 5, the ThinkPad X13S netted 1118 on single core and 5776 on multi core, up against the MacBook Air M1 at 1727 single core and 7585 multi core. Definitely a fairly large gap, but if you don't like to support Apple and you do want to have a powerful ARM based system, this might be a good option. And on a side note that has nothing to do with the video, the merge window for the next version of the Linux kernel is now going to be open, and he's likely going to call it 6.0 because I'm starting to worry about getting confused by big numbers again. I'm not lying about this. This is actually a thing that Linus thinks with kernel versioning. If you've not seen the kernel versioning video, go back and check that out. So let me know. Do you care at all about ARM-based Linux? Are you happy with your x86 system, or are you waiting patiently for RISC-V? And do you think the exact same problem that Linus laid out for ARM-based servers would also happen with RISC-V as well? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, starting bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.